Hi friends! Today I'm covering my recent makeup purchases. Shame on me. I try to have a handle on my makeup buying temptations and I have done well in buying products that I feel most excited by, that I feel I will like the most and not just buying random makeup just to try on camera and tell you about it. Although I understand I established my channel on new product reviews and such, but I had to put the brakes on it because it does get expensive. And I don't receive a ton of PR. I receive enough, I think, to share the big new releases here and there. But as of late, I purchased some items that I was very interested in. And I wanted to share them on camera here. The product descriptions, maybe a little bit of a demo. And I'll revisit these products in my monthly favorites. If they're doing well for the rest of February, what I think of them, what, you know, changing my mind, wearing them in different environments and circumstances. Well, this is what the video will be about. And all that to say, time stamps will be down below with the respective product. So if there's something specific you wish to see, just click the number down below and it'll bring you right to that chapter in the video. Guess who I have on my sweatshirt today? We got Nanami! Look at the back! Look at the back! Look at the hood! Look at the hood! When I gotta do the Nanami glasses push. <laughs> This sweatshirt is from Kaiben Zero from their recent Jujutsu Kaisen revamp version 2.0 drop. I believe the next drop is Haikyuu. 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 The volleyball anime, which I started but have not finished. So I definitely need to do that. But I just I love Nanami so much. All right, what did I buy? Let me start with the NARS. It's such a long name. Hold on. Light Reflecting Foundation. I was intrigued by this, especially since it came out around the same time or soon after the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin. And these two were often compared to each other because the fact I think they find themselves in the light foundation category. And NARS being a brand that I definitely respect for their skin tone color science, they do undertones and skin tones beautifully well. And the fact that they have released a foundation that's light reflecting, I mean, anything that's light reflecting, sign me up. But the texture was lightweight, skin-like in finish. Let me read a little bit here on the product page. An advanced makeup skincare hybrid, oh I know we love that, with a natural finish that quickly blurs and smooths while visibly improving skin's clarity over time. The coverage is said to be medium, I said light, excuse me, finish natural and it is a liquid foundation. I have spoken about how I feel in regards to makeup skincare. I rely on makeup for the makeup and rely on skincare for the skincare benefits. Does this maybe help if you don't do any skincare regimen at all? Probably, but I look to rely on my serums and moisturizers, special treatments to rectify any going ons that I have, which I do. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation unfortunately, is by my own doing. You know how to prevent that, Alicia? Stop picking your face. I have the shade Valencia M5, and Valencia M5 is medium to medium deep with warm undertones and a peach tone. I thought this was a pretty good match. I felt others would have been a little too warm for me. So here we have Valencia, and I know it looks light on the back of my hand, but when blended out, I think an appropriate skin tone for me. Oh, excuse me. Why don't I bring you in a little closer? <gasps> That's enough. Oh, crazy brows, excuse me. I just did one pump and will apply this to half of my face because I have another complexion product on standby that I wanted to share. Again, forgot a mirror, excuse me. I had tried this foundation already and I really love it. One, it's not fragranced, thank you NARS. It is very lightweight in consistency 
and I do detect that blurring effect where despite its medium level of coverage, it evens out my skin tone, it does smooth it out. I do think a little goes a long way and if you want to adjust the coverage on portions that need more, then go in with a little bit more but I wouldn't go in initially with like two pumps or how people maybe like to apply their foundation. I like to have a little more control in that regard. But in terms of how my skin looks and feels, it still feels lightweight. It doesn't feel like I have a heavy dose of foundation on my skin. And I quite like the skin match. I'm happy that I went with Valencia. If I needed to adjust it further, I could rely on bronzer, but it's not so light that when adding bronzer, the contrast will look a little off. It works out enough so that if I wanted to add a little bit of warmth, it will it will come together in the end. So here you see, although my blemishes still appear somewhat, I think the, the blurring nature of the formula enables it to look smoother and more even in tone, which I absolutely adore. Again, love the consistency, very lightweight in the dry down as it sets. Longevity, I have to get back to you on. I'm applying this now, it's 1108. I would like to go to the gym with it, wear it around, see how it goes. I wish I had the LYS concealer. I have to order it. I was just too late in doing so. And again, if I do end up buying it, I will mention it in my February faves or have a dedicated video. The next complexion product caught me by surprise. I saw this on the Sephora new product page and what am I doing? The Rose Ink Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum. This is $49 and I was intrigued by the high price tag and I believe this is the brand for Charlotte's niece? Is that who it is? Rose Ink is clean beauty powered by science. A partnership between Rosie Huntington Whitley and biotech company Amaris. It leverages sustainable innovation and nearly two decades of experience in the makeup chair. So this seems to be more of like a collaboration between two brands. If any of you have more insight, please let me know down below. I would love to learn about it. What compelled me to buy this is Okay, there have been instances for the last few weeks where I wanted to apply a makeup product that necessarily was not a foundation. And although I have been using Charlotte's Beautiful Skin, which I really like, and recently with the inclusion of the NARS, I still wanted something that was not as committal as those two products. And when I read about this. I was intrigued given the product description. It says here that it is a radiant skin tint that visibly plumps and smooths the skin while delivering sheer coverage. So this is super light coverage as a radiant finish and it's liquid. It has sodium hyaluronate, squalene, ac acetyl tetrapeptide, dash two. Now what kept me from using tints is I feel that a lot of tints on the market have SPF. I love SPF, but I rather rely on a separate product to get ample SPF coverage that will be too much if found in a makeup product, right? If you're just using an exclusively formulated SPF product, you apply a lot to get the level of protection that weathers SPF 30 or 50, whereas that will be far too much makeup if you were to rely on like, let's say the Laura Mercier uh, tint or whatever, moisturizer. That will be way too much makeup in order to get the SPF 20 that's listed on the bottle. So I wanted a tint that did not have any SPF that was fragrance free, thank you Rose Ink, and that was lighter in coverage. I just wanted a more even skin tone. I wasn't looking for a heavy duty coverage dosing for my blemishes. You know, if I wanted to cover them, I'll use a concealer. That is totally fine. So I used this yesterday and I thought this was quite interesting. You see the pigmentation is suspended in these like capsules and therefore in this serum like consistency. When you press it, you can see the pigments, but you have to then swirl it around in order to activate the actual color. This is in number 80. Excuse me, I'm, I apologize. I did not grab the shade description. Medium tan skin tone peach. So here we are 
it's recommended that you use their brush, but that is a marketing strategy just to buy their brush. I got plenty. Thank you so much, Rose Ink. I like to apply this with my fingers because it's very refreshing. It does feel like a serum. So it is like applying an actual skincare product, but the benefit you have is that little bit of coverage from the encapsulated pigment spheres. And since it is light, I think the shade match is far more forgiving than let's say you would try to shade match yourself with a medium coverage foundation or uh, a high coverage foundation. I applied this yesterday and I absolutely love the finish of this product. The fact that again, Although it does not completely cover my pigmentation, it gives me a more even skin tone, a look of freshness, a little bit of dewiness without feeling greasy on the skin or overly moisturized, you know? Let's say you put on some a little too heavy for the day, okay? But it has the right amount of glow, I think, on those points that look beautiful when illuminated, and that's just from the serum itself. So I quite enjoy it just for that purpose alone. If I needed something quick to apply all over my face, didn't want to apply the NARS light or even Charlotte's Beautiful Skin, just something that, again, has the skincare benefits since it is a serum first and a makeup product after. In terms of how I see it priority-wise, the benefit, you have a little bit of that pigment there, again, to even out the skin tone for it to look smoother, to add a little plump and dew from the sodium hollow hyaluronate. I love how my skin feels, most definitely, but you see here from the Lars, Lars, from the NARS light reflecting, more coverage, but my skin still looks like itself, not overly made up. And the rose ink tinted, again, serum, just enough to give me a little bit more. Like this is what I would put on if I wanted to teach class virtually, or if I just needed to be somewhere and not have all the makeup on. So I look forward to using this long-term for the duration of the month, especially when switching between the Rose Ink and the NARS. I'm sorry, I'm looking for my concealer. Right now, I'm still using Pat's concealer. I have not used any other since, but I thought it was time that I would change it up. So the next one on the roster, as I had mentioned before, will be the LYS. Hopefully I could get my hands on that soon. If I had another shade in Pat's concealer, I most certainly would use it with the Rose Ink Skin Enhance, absolutely. Because again, it's just, you know, even if I took which LM, which, which one did I put on? I have like two, I'm sorry. LM14 is not my all over the face shade, but whatever left over I got, you know, just slap it on there. And I thought the shade range for the Skin Enhance was, was quite reasonable considering again that it is light coverage you could get away with choosing a shade that will kind of match with you that's not going to look bizarrely off but i really like it i like it fam i'm happy i bought this it's expensive it's 49 dollars. i don't know if it's because the pigments are encapsulated the technology that was used to produce this product required a high price tag I don't know. All I know is that I really like it and I don't regret buying it. Will I change my mind about that statement? Perhaps. As of now, I'm not mad at it. Also from Rose Ink, I have plenty, plenty of cream blushes. Too many actually. But I wanted to check this one out. The Blush Divine Radiant Lip and Cheek Color. That has reusable compacts. So you get the compact and you have the two pinholes here on the back and can just purchase the refills thereafter if you wanted more colors. This is in the shade Fox Glove, and of course, with the description being a warm terracotta, you knew I had to cap it. The total is $30 with the compact and blush pan, but just the blush pan is 18. A cream blush infused with squalene and ceramides to visibly brighten, blur, and hydrate skin with a buildable flush of radiant color. Not too caught up in the ingredients in terms of skincare benefit. I just love the color and I swatched it yesterday, but you see it has like a spongy consistency and it's pretty tight in the pan. So it doesn't have the same slide as let's say the Melt Cosmetics 
uh, cream blush lights. There's a little more tightness in here than LYS's Satin Matte Cream Blush. I would think this reminds me of the Tower 28, but not as emollient. So I'll take some from the swatch. And I feel this actually packs quite the punch. And I rather like this with a finger application. I think it offers up really nice control, although you are most certainly welcome to apply this with a brush. However, I don't know if with a sponge it will pick up makeup underneath because I don't use sponges anymore, rarely. Why don't we apply this on the other side with my Sonya G? Classic base. I'll take with my finger, place it on the back of my hand as I do feel this will benefit from warming up prior. So that's what you'll get if you apply from back of hand to cheek. If from directly the pan, you will get more of a heavy dosing of color, but I do like the consistency. Again, I think because there's castor seed oil in here, there is a thickness to it that maybe people will not like. I don't actually know overall how people feel about this product. It's been out for a bit, so I'm late to the game, but I do love the color. I think it gives me that natural flush of daily glow, like, you know, just barely put together to, to make me look alive. And it leaves behind a really nice sheen that I appreciate so that the color doesn't look completely flat. So in addition to the actual glow that this color provides, it does have a little bit of a highlight to it, I think, just from the consistency of the product. And it could be due to the fact that the NARS is light reflecting, but I think it's more so that the skin enhance does have a little bit of due to it without actually feeling oily on the skin. That's what I admire about the, uh, the skin tint as well. And you could also put this on your lip. So this is what Fox Glove looks on the lips and the cheeks. This is like my everyday face, hands down. A little bit of the concealer, either the, sure, the beautiful skin, NARS, but most likely the skin enhance with any cream blush, in this case, the Rose Ink. I look alive, unlike when I started this video. All right, the last thing that I, well, no, that's not true. Second to last thing I bought from Sephora. I was intrigued by the fact, I did not know this at the time. I ignored a lot of the Tom Ford quads because it just appeared to me that there were a lot of misses in terms of inconsistencies and dryer. I don't really know what the story was, but when I was told by one of my fellow eyeshadow maniacs and artist, Casey, that she had recently bought the new cream formula, the Eye Color Quad Creme. This is in Smoky Quartz number 37. Right now you have three out in total. I believe Tiger Eye had the three shimmers and the one matte and Rosy Taupe? Rose Topaz? Rose Topaz was the other quad. More neutral, but it had a beautiful sparkly overlay in that same cream formula. Infused with a pigment technology that combines lush emollients and mimics the structure of skin's ceramides. Whoa. Eye color creme long wearing eyeshadows move with skin for a crease. Huh? And flake resistant finish and high impact intensity. Casey had said that this reminded her of the Natasha Denona cream to powder formula, which definitely one of my most favorite formulas. So I was just at Sephora yesterday and I swatched it. I was very interested. I chose Smoky Quartz because I love these tones and I love that they're matte. But because of this new like creme formula, it definitely has more of a skin-like finish. So this shade here definitely takes on more of a taupe feel. This looks to be more rosy in tone. A warmer, hardier terracotta. Oh, that's, br look at that. This is what I'm saying. And the last shade here is more of like a neutral bark shade. So these are the swatches for smoke, smoky quartz. And I immediately thought of Natasha, Natasha Danona's Biba palette, uh, more specifically tone. So I think based on how these feel comparatively, that there's a little more moosiness to Natasha's cream to powder formula. And it doesn't have the same 
robust serving of pigment like the Tom Ford does. The Tom Ford is giving you a lot of color on that creamy swatch. And the other formula I thought of was from Pat McGrath, and it's found in the Divine Rose Lux Quad Eternal Eden. I don't know when she had introduced this again after, I think it might have been in another quad, but this was a newer, moussier, not her typical dry matte texture. You see there's a little bit of, of creaminess there. And also the Tom Ford reminded me of this formula from Pat. Pat has a little more of a powder finish or more powdery feel than the Tom Ford. You see that there's not much kickback or there's not a lot of residue left behind when you swatch these. And these are very, very smooth. I really like this skin in hands. I like the NARS too, I like the NARS too. Oh, that was too much. Oh no, it fell on my lash. All right, don't use your viewfinder as a mirror, Alicia. I'm sure you're anxious about my brows. I will complete them after this demo. I promise. I typically like to use fluffy types of shaders with um, I just noticed there was a little bit of color on my finger when I applied the Vizier primer. I'm like, I didn't put any shadow on my lids yet. Why is it there? Taking my Chikohoto F05. This is a big fluffy brush, but I thought an appropriate size and type to use with this formula as I, when I bought it, I just thought one and done, out the door. You wanna see the topity taupe. It doesn't have a whole lot of color, when applied on the lid, but it's actually a nice dose if you wanted something light. If you're my complexion, you want it just your skin tone, but a bit cooler, it does give a little bit of shading on the eye. It's not prominent, it's not very impactful, but it will even out any lid discoloration. And if you want it just a a foundation to apply liner on or again something to give slight shading into the crease then sure the next color i adore again this is more of like a a beigey type rose that i feel perfect if you want a little bit more on the lid and these blend fantastically well. Easy to apply, to slap on the lid, but as you see, remarkably easy to swirl and twirl, buff out the color, and dare I say, optimal for a beginner, because if one feels intimidated by the fact that this is Tom Ford, it's gonna be hard to blend, I think this new cream formula, I, I would consider it more cream to powder, but I think far easier to maneuver around the lid increase. And optimal for textured lids, because of that more emollient feel, it's gonna slide across the skin a lot easier than a typical powder would. And there's a nice sheen left behind so that the shadow application doesn't look so flat, especially it is matte. That's pretty. Now this is the color that I love. This. I, th I would consider this to be like a warm terracotta. I applied this last night on the outer part of my lid. So we are placing that color on top of the taupe. And again, very simple to blend out. It gives the eye a little bit of warmth without it appearing too orange. And as you see, incredibly simple to blend out. I just took it a little too far as I did use uh, a pretty big brush for my outer, or rather, more specifically, my lower lash line. But I think that is such a lovely color. And if you wanna see this guy, well, we can do it both ways. We can take a look at it as an outer lid smoke. So I'll take a smaller brush here. I'll tap that carefully on the outer part of my lid. And I think this formula is especially helpful when dealing with smokier colors such as this one, where you have a little bit more control and the blend looks very smooth and has like, again, that skin-like finish once all is said and done. And you see this can become smoky fairly quickly. I just adore that hazy effect it has on the eye. I'll take a smaller brush here in case you wanted to go 
the smoky eyeliner route. I think it helpful to use a smaller brush so you have a little bit more control here along the lash line. Although cream to powder, you can successfully build the intensity to what you're looking for. And since it has a little bit of that slide, it's easy to then paint across your lash without bringing the skin along for the ride. You know how that goes sometimes. So when applied with a soft brush, I mean, very easy to get that on the lash line. Don't mind me, I'm just doing a little clean up here. So be aware, if you pick up too much of this color, you might get a little bit of fallout as again, this color does pack a punch and I think it wise to tap it on the lids first and then get into the swirling and twirling when the pigments have adhered well to the skin so that you don't prematurely start to blend and residue starts to drop. Just pulling it out a little bit more. I think this color is so pretty when it's combined with the other shades in here. Hmm, I just like to clean up afterwards because I can never get the blending right. I'm a failure. All right, so I'll wear this out for the sake of um, not looking crazy, although I don't look too crazy. I'll apply this on the other side just so it could look more uniform. But this is how the eyes look. Not bad. Again, I just like the simplistic approach to these shadows and I feel the, the matte nature of them doesn't warrant uh, a shimmer or metallic. Sometimes an all matte eye is just so classic and sophisticated. And for these shades to come in this cream-like texture, I think yields a different result if they were a powder. Now compared to the well-loved Coco Mirage, which was actually gifted to me by a viewer from Mexico. So these are the quads side by side. I think you can detect similarities, although Coco Mirage doesn't have a dark, dark brown like Smoky Quartz does. So this might be a little more user-friendly for a wider serving of skin tones. Whereas Coco Mirage, I think is limited in terms of how deep it can go. The brown here is, is far lighter than what's found again in Smoky Quartz. But I do think this rosy brown shade is similar to the one here. Yeah, but you see there's just a lot more color to that shade in Smoky Quartz. I'm happy to use both, combine and do however. These are expensive, so I should use the heck out of them. But for now, I enjoy just having the quad. Just makes makeup far more simple. I don't feel the need to apply five shades at once. And you're like, Alicia, it's time for you to put on some Zam brows, okay? Right now I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Micro Precision Pencil in dark brown, not my ideal shade, but I do want to finish this pencil. What I like about the tip is that it's not as big as the Benefit Goof Proof. It's like a wedge, but much smaller. And I feel that allowed a more, a better serving of color than like the precisely my brow, but you still have loads of control as if it were a precisely my brow size pencil because it's smaller overall. I do think the dark brown is a little too dark brown. That's why I'd mentioned, I think sometime last year that I purchased natural brown, but the great thing is these are refillable. So I can just get the natural brown, stick it on, and not have to buy another pencil altogether. So I gotta give it to Charlotte Tilbury for that, whereas the Benefit, they don't have that refill design for their brow pencils, so it can become quite wasteful. So maybe because of that, I'll just do the switch, because I do really like this pencil. I'm just trying to use a careful light hand here, because if I, you see how they, they're a little too dark. If I brush them out, however, Maybe they won't look as crazy. Not too bad. I think it looks like this because I'm sitting in front of my window. So here's a look at how the wing liner looks compared to the schmokety schmo. Since I'm already here, let me just do both eyes the same. Well, you can see this, <laughs> this turned out much darker because I think I had the other color on underneath. 
So that's why it looks just more intense. So taking a bigger crease brush just to diffuse down <laughs> what I did and I'm also taking my Lisa Eldridge foundation brush tapping around the edges to take away some of that blend so it doesn't appear so far spread I guess I could put more on this side to even things out there's something about a matte smoky eye that I feel has just a different vibe than doing a matte smoke with a shimmer lid you know what I mean I'm taking a little bit of the medium rose brown shade I'm placing it on the lower lash line to give it a little more haze. I know I already look dead, but <laughs> I have to buy my Kill Lash. I thought I placed an order in iHerb. I could have sworn I clicked placed order, but um, nothing has arrived. And I keep forgetting to check my email to search for an order number just so I can... <laughs> I mean, I thought I really ordered this freaking mascara, you guys. I said second to last product when I introduced the Tom Four Quad. So you are all wondering, well, Alicia, what was the last product? Hold on, let me finish applying my mascara, okay? I kind of like how this looks. I'm not mad at it. Oh, and the Tom Four Quads are $89. So I would not recommend you buying this if you're on a budget. I would just wait for it until, you know, you get a gift card or the Sephora sale rolls around again and you happen to be rouge, you could get 20% off. Don't be like me and buy this full price, fam. I was weak. I was weak in the moment. So the last product that I bought is the Bread Hair Cream. More specifically, the Elastic Bounce Leave-In. I believe that mentioned Bread on my channel maybe one or two years ago and I raved about their hair wash and their mask. And at the time, I had wished that they came out with a styling product, but I only knew it was a matter of time considering that the brand I think recently launched at the time was new. So to see that they finally came out with a styling cream I was intrigued. I like styling creams over gels, although I do find myself combining both from time to time. I was dying to try anything the Bread Beauty Supply brand had produced. Unfortunately though, it does smell like blueberry. Not my favorite, but we'll see how it goes when I actually use it on my hair and how it will smell thereafter. So this is a huge jar. Can't wait to try. I think I'm gonna wash my hair tonight. This is the consistency. <laughs> no space. This is the consistency of the cream. It feels lightweight, but I do detect that because of the texture, it will provide some hold. So I'm looking forward to see how my hair looks, how defined, it appears, you know, how it will do if I diffuse it dry and two or three days after. Maybe I should apply a little bit. Well, no, I don't need to apply lipstick. I got my, I got my Fox Glow. So here's the finished look of my mini haul. I quite like the products that I recently purchased. Again, although I bought the makeup, I tried to make the purchases as thoughtful as possible and not just buy anything that was new or looked cool because I saw that Tom Ford release the quads I think maybe a few weeks ago but until I finally felt the consistency in store and I haven't purchased Tom Ford in a while so I thought why not just don't buy all three okay Alicia if that does happen or if I have the urge to I'm trying to wait for an opportunity where I could get them on sale and not just buy them full price because $89 for one quad is very expensive and I quite like smoky quartz. I think it's perfect for every day and also even though this is quite smoky, I like that daily smoke dial. It's just enough to give a little bit of mm, but not so much that it warrants me to dress up a lot. I could still wear my hoodie, you know? The skin and hands has been what I'm most impressed by. Definitely, yes, I knew it wasn't gonna be like a foundation foundation, but the fact that it gives my skin this, this light covering, but still blurs and still evens out my skin tone is perfect for an everyday product that you could just slap on on top of your already use skincare so I think you can integrate this in your regimen quite seamlessly and the NARS I love the NARS I really like and of course the cream blush 
adore this color. So stay tuned for updates, fam. I will most certainly touch upon these products again in some capacity for my monthly favorites in terms of how I feel about them. Has my mind changed? I love them now. Do I hate them later? You will find out then. Let me know what your recent makeup purchases have been if you had made any. If they happen to be the products that I presented in this video, I will see you down in the comments below. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial haul. You better not, Alicia. Monthly faves or anime, get ready with me. Take care and I will see you again soon.